Nelson. Here's a look at what's going on this week in the news. We begin with news from Portugal. One of the highlights of Pope Francis's two-day visit to Fatima, Portugal, was the canonizations of the two visionary shepherd children of Fatima on the 100th anniversary of the first Marian apparitions. Rome Reports has more on this historic mass from Fatima. Before the canonization mass, Pope Francis met with Portugal's prime minister, then continued to the sanctuary of Fatima. There, he visited the tombs of the two shepherds, Francisco and Jacinta. Pilgrims waited at the entrance to greet and take photographs with him. Once inside, the Pope prayed for a few moments at their tombs. Once the ceremony began and Pope Francis officially declared Jacinto and Francisco saints, the crowd of 500,000 pilgrims unleashed an extended applause. Declaramos e definimos como santos os beatos Francisco Marto e Jacinta Marto. The rite of canonization in the square of Covadi area was emotional. One of the tenderest moments came when the family of Lucas, the child who received the miracle, approached the Pope with his offerings. The little boy could not hold back his desire to embrace him. During his homily, the Holy Father spoke about the impact that encountering the Virgin Mary has on a Christian's life. He recalled the two shepherds whose lives were changed. Jacinta and Francisco, in fact, are the youngest saints that are not martyrs of the church. Demos mai. Agarrados a ella como filios, dos seus brazos, vida, esperanza y a paz que necesitan y que suplico para todos los meus hermanos. After the conclusion of Mass, the Pope greeted the sick and addressed a message before blessing them with this spectacular monstrance in the form of a son. Queridos doentes, vivei a vossa vida con un don e dicei a Nossa Senhora como pastorinhos que vos quereis ofrecer a Deus de todo o coração. With this same monstrance, Pope Francis imparted the blessing to all the pilgrims present, and he also exchanged gifts with the Bishop of Liria Fatima. Pope Francis gave his farewell to Our Lady of Fatima with the white cloth, which is one of the most beautiful images of the celebration. That puts the final touch on the 100th anniversary of the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima. Looking now at news from around the country, Pope Francis has made the elimination of human trafficking one of his papacy's highest priorities. With that in mind, the Pope sent Bishop Marcelo Sanchez Sorondo, one of his top advisors on human trafficking, to Baton Rouge for the dedication of a shelter for young trafficking victims called Metanoia Manor. The home is the vision of Father Jeff Bailly, pastor of St. John the Baptist Church in Zachary. It will be staffed by Hospitalier Sisters of Mercy and will provide a safe haven for female victims under age 18. In his address at the dedication, Bishop Sanchez Rondo noted that human trafficking is an international concern with an estimated 50 million victims being forced into prostitution, sex slavery, and other abusive behavior. 80%, the bishop said, of the $32 billion generated from human trafficking is rooted in prostitution with girls as young as 12 and 13. Because of the problem's prevalence in the state, Governor John Bell Edwards said Louisiana has a special obligation to not only combat trafficking, but to reach out to victims. The governor noted two reasons for the pervasiveness of the problem in Louisiana. The first is interstate highway systems connecting major population centers along the I-10 corridor to Louisiana, and the second being a number of big sporting events that come to Louisiana each year. Metanoia Manor will house 16 girls who will be homeschooled as well as taught life skills and job skills. They also will be allowed to stay as long as necessary. In news from around the world, on the flight back to Rome from Portugal, Pope Francis held his traditional press conference on the plane. One of the questions he was asked about was the authenticity of the Marian apparitions at Medjugorje. 
Regarding the first apparitions, when the visionaries were children, the Pope said that it has to continue to be investigated. Surrounding the alleged actual apparitions that continue to occur, the Pope said that he's personally more negative. The Pope said he prefers the Virgin Mary as a mother, our mother, not as head of a post office that sends a message every day at a specific time. This is not the mother of Jesus, he said. Three of the six young people who originally claimed to have seen Mary in Medjugorje in June of 1981 say she continues to appear to them each day. The other three say Mary appears to them once a year now. Despite his personal doubts, the Pope said that the spiritual and pastoral facts cannot be denied. He said people go there and convert, find God, and lives are changed. The Pope said they would look over the responses from the theologians about the pastoral effects of Medjugorje, and at the conclusion of that, they will say something. And finally in the news, retired Brooklyn Bishop and Boston native Thomas Daly has passed away at the age of 89. The bishop was living at a residence in Douglaston in Queens. Bishop Daly had headed the Diocese of Brooklyn from 1990 until his retirement in 2003. Ordained a priest of the Archdiocese of Boston in 1952 by Cardinal Richard Cushing. He joined the Missionary Society of St. James the Apostle in 1960 and ministered to the people of Lima, Peru for five years. He often referred to this time as the happiest of his life. The Belmont, Massachusetts native was ordained an auxiliary bishop of Boston in 1976 and then in 1984 was appointed the first bishop of the new diocese of Palm Beach, Florida before going to Brooklyn. Bishop Daly also served as the Supreme Chaplain of the Knights of Columbus from 1987 until 2005. Well, that is all the information we have for you at this time. I'm Kevin Nelson. Don't forget, you can keep up to date on Catholic news throughout the week. Catholic news break right here on the Catholic TV Network.